Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. Hopefully you've all seen the promotion we'll be doing on reprinting the history of the 33rd Battalion, the Machine Gun Corps. A book that was originally printed in 1919 and only 1600 copies available. So we're doing a reprint of that. And you know, it's, it's, it's a unit history that has to cover so much of Machine Gun Corps history because it's one of the only printed records of it. Uh, there's some errors in it, there's some elaborations um, and some exaggerations as well, which we're all able to detail in this reprint. Uh, but it's been suggested you might like to hear some of the content of that as well. So we're sat here in, in our Great War dugout in the, in the collection here in Wiltshire. And I'm just going to read a section of the book to uh, try and get a flavour of, of what's covered. And this is 1918, so just after the German offensive um, and part of the uh, counter-attacks and attacks that followed that. So it's operations carried out by the battalion, Les B Company, south and east of Metterin. Lieutenant Colonel Hutchison visited the General Staff of the 33rd Division at 10pm on 11th of April. The situation, particularly in the south, was most obscure. It was known only that the enemy had captured both Merville and Estaires, some seven miles south of Metterin. It was supposed, though not known, that his advance had been arrested in this area, and as a measure of safety, full military precautions were ordered and in conjunction with troops of the 19th Infantry Brigade, outposts were at once put out covering the approaches east and south of Metterin. At 10.30 on the morning of the 12th, Lieutenant Colonel Hutchison received orders from the General Staff to have a reconnaissance made in the vicinity. At 10.45am, three cyclist patrols from the scouts were ordered to proceed, and having located the enemy, to report to battalion headquarters established at a farmhouse about one mile south of Metterin. Each patrol consisted of an NCO and four men as under. Number 1 patrol, proceeding via Clapbank, Corporal Milthorpe. Number 2 patrol, proceeding via Utterstein, Sergeants and Ledger, Military Medal. Number 3 patrol, proceeding via Strutziel and Maris, Corporal Bourne. And numbers 2 and 3 patrols were ordered to wait at Vierbequin at 11.30am. The commanding officer was 2nd Lieutenant McLaren. The intelligence officer, proceeding in advance, reconnoitred due south of Metterer, the Windmill Ridge and to Oosterstein. Here, large numbers of both wounded and unwounded men were found to be in full retreat northwards and westwards. Lieutenant Colonel Hutchison pushed on with number two patrol about half a mile south of Oosterstein, where our rear guards of the 31st Division, particularly from one battalion, were found to be in precipitate retreat without officers and with orders to retire. The enemy was observed about 600 yards distant in groups pushing forward under covering fire. On more than two occasions he was seen deliberately to shoot down at short range women flying from their flaming homesteads. The infantry were rallied and lined out on a 500 yards front facing south, south of the village, full use being made of buildings and ditches. Lieutenant Colonel Hutchison placed 2nd Lieutenant McLaren in command and disposed the rest of the patrol under Sergeant St. Leisure, MM, and Corporal Bourne to rally the infantry and organise the locality for defence, he himself bicycling for assistance. In 20 minutes he had reached divisional headquarters in Metterin, having dumped his bicycle and commandeered a Ford ambulance and reported direct to GOC, suggesting that guns should be rushed up to fill the breach and infantry sent as soon as possible. A motor lorry, part of an ASC column, was asked for. The officer in charge of the column refused to give it, although the urgency of the case was explained to him and it was empty. Lieutenant Colonel Hutchison therefore put the motor transport officer quietly to sleep with a right hook and commandeered the lorry and took it to battalion headquarters. It was driven by driver Sharples of the ASC who thoroughly entered into this rather dramatic joke. In a few minutes it was loaded with eight guns and material and crowded with gun teams. Orders were given to establish battalion headquarters at the Moulin de Hugenmacher and signallers were sent forward. 200 yards south of the mill, the lorry was halted by 2nd Lieutenant McLaren and the scouts, who having fought in close combat with the enemy with rifles, had been forced to retire to the windmill ridge. The infantry, in complete disorder and often led on by their officers, were retiring onto Metera. Between 10.30 and 11.30am, the advance of the enemy was carried out with astonishing rapidity, pressing particularly from the east, apparently trying to isolate Metaran from the troops who were supposed to be defending its southern approaches. He even succeeded in pushing forward two light guns north of the windmill crest, covering a distance of about a mile and a half in less than 40 minutes. His advance from the south towards Metaran was very rapid. Elements of the division which had been rallied by the scouts under 2nd Lieutenant McLaren evaporated west and north before the enemy advance, which was now only checked by the resolution of the scouts. Both Sergeant St. Leisure and Corporal Bourne were pri 
Private Busby in particular, showing extraordinary heroism, ordered the defence with astonishing coolness and initiative, ably supported by the scouts and a very few stout-hearted stragglers. The excursion of the motor lorry came to an abrupt end when it was halted by the last of our advance guards under the intelligence officer. It came immediately under machine gun and rifle fire. The order, action front, was given, and in a very few minutes eight guns were disposed on the northern slopes of the Windmill Hill Crest, covering in particular the southern and southeasterly approaches to Metera and the Metera and Beck. Half of A Company, having been taken into action under Major, Major Luthwaite and disposed in position by the adjutant, the lorry returned to its base to collect half a C Company under Major Judson. This incident was probably the most thrilling in which the machine gunners of the division ever took part. The rapidity of action, the extraordinary situation, the perfect discipline and drill, the setting of untouched farmhouses, copses and quietly grazing cattle, the flying civilians and retiring infantry behind, the magnificent targets obtained, and the complete grip of the situation by and determination of machine gun commanders. This action and the subsequent operations of the battalion undoubtedly will take the highest place for all time in the history of the machine gun corps, under an epic of the tenacity and grit of the British soldier with his back to the wall fighting against great odds. So as you can see, Hutchison there, um, we don't know this is fully authored by Hutchison, but we believe it to be so. It matches much of the style of his later autobiographies and uh, his writing in Machine Guns being also a history of the Machine Gun Corps. We've been able to uh, explain some of the phrases, uh, some of the actions a little bit more, um, and, and just try and put this into context of being read by members of the battalion and their families and relatives in 1919 and then the 1920s. It's a really interesting uh, book and I hope that you'll support us in getting the pre-orders in place uh, to secure your copy. We want to know what interest there is in having this reprinted uh, because many people do have it. It's just not something you want to always get off the shelf, read, um, make notes about and be great at research. And we want to make sure that you know, it's accessible to everybody. Uh, it's a sort of prelude to our publishing of the history of the Machine Gun Corps in, over the next uh, couple of years. Uh, finalising a project that's been in place with the Machine Gun Corps History Project now uh, for nearly 20 years. So you know, this is just all that lead up and ahead of the commemorations of, of the centenary of the disbandment of the Machine Gun Corps next year in 2022. Uh, so please do uh, get on board, pre-order a, a copy for yourselves um, and also consider becoming a patron of the association as well. The Vickers MG Collection and Research Association obviously doesn't just cover the Machine Gun Corps, it's just one of those many different units that use the Vickers machine gun and we cover all, all the different periods that the Vickers machine gun was in service, as well as from all around the world with all the different countries that used it. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to, and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.